just what we need, more foods to avoid. It's what the internet's full of is avoid this, avoid that. What are we left with? We're really not left with anything. Maybe candy canes and pop tarts. But when we talk about the world of histamines, there's a lot of nuance there. You've probably heard of histamines. Dr. Andrew Huberman just had an episode on them not that long ago where he brought a histamine expert in and it was very illuminating. And I've refrained from talking about histamines for a while on this channel because it can be a very complicated discussion. But now that it's out there in the mainstream a little bit more, we should look at it. Histamines are released by the body. Like you probably have heard of an antihistamine before, right? You take it when you have allergies. Histamine is a response to allergens, it's a response to injury. It can cause all kinds of things. It's involved in uh, nociception, it's involved in like pain. So like if histamines are high, you can be in pain, you can feel bloated, you can have vasodilation or vasoconstriction, you can have bronchospasms, you can have all kinds of uh, mucosal secretion. So more than anything, it just makes you feel lethargic and achy. And people find that when they eat specific foods, they feel this way. But if you were to just eliminate foods that were high in histamines, well, first of all, you'd start restricting your diet a lot and it would just become even more confusing. The last thing we need is more restriction. We need education. So in this video, we will talk about foods that are high in histamine, but we'll also talk about foods that increase histamine in the body, sort of indirectly, but then we'll talk about foods that decrease the enzyme needed to break down histamine. So basically, histamine is broken down in our body by something called deamine oxidase. So this enzyme breaks down histamine, and when it breaks it down, all things are fine and dandy. But when the enzyme does not break it down, histamine can elevate. And essentially, a quote-unquote histamine intolerance is someone that doesn't have a lot of that enzyme. So they have an inability to break down histamine. Realistically, this is only about one to 2% of the population that actually have this. Okay, so these are people that when they consume histamine, they get weird responses. However, people can have a mild response to histamines and not be completely histamine uh, intolerant, right? But there's also other pieces we need to look at. For example, 30 to 55% of people with IBS or gut dysbiosis have histamine intolerance. So even though only 1% of the general population have histamine intolerances, people that have bad gut health end up having a large amount of histamine intolerance. So we know that a lot of this is rooted in the gut and the enzyme DAO, deamine oxidase, that breaks down histamine starts in the gut. So what foods should you avoid? How should we look at this? How should we navigate this? Well, in order to break that down, we have to understand the main causes of histamine intolerance first. So we'll break those down. Before we get started, I did put a link down below for Seed Symbiotic. If you're talking about gut health, one of the biggest levers that you can pull is adding a very good symbiotic, which is a combination of a prebiotic and a probiotic. Seed has been a sponsor on this channel for going on four years now. I've talked about them for years. They are literally the only probiotic that I would recommend because they're the only one that actually puts their own money behind clinical research, even if it doesn't go in their favor. They are honest, their moral compass is straight up, and their technology with the capsule inside of a capsule is really interesting. And they have a prebiotic and a probiotic in one. So I'm not saying that this is the solve for histamine issues. I'm saying they are a sponsor on this channel. And if you are looking at it potentially improving your gut health and changing your life, that might be a good thing to try out. So that link down below is a 25% off discount link for Seed. So 25% off their daily symbiotic, and that link is in the top line of the description directly underneath this video. So the main causes, first and foremost, genetics. Okay, a genetic polymorphism where you do not produce DAO. But putting that aside, the next one is going to be gut health related. Poor gut health can absolutely lead to a histamine intolerance. This could come from bad diet, it can also come from illness, a parasite, or some kind of issue with your gut in general that may have been spurred by something. Also allergic diseases, where you have just an overabundance of histamine and an inability to clear it. So asthma, things like that. And then of course, foods that inhibit DAO. So everyone jumps first and foremost to eliminating the foods that are high in histamine. But realistically, the problem here is the DAO, not having the enzyme to break down the histamine. And there are foods 
that actually inhibit DAO, one in particular, which we'll get to later on in this video. But let's talk about the foods that are high in histamines first. There was a study that was published in Biomolecules that took a look at this, and it did find that there certainly are foods that are specifically high in histamines, and it usually comes as a result of a couple of things. What they found with this is that there needed to be a high amount of free aminos, just meaning essentially extra aminos available. Okay, then they also found there needed to be what is called decarboxylase positive microorganisms. I'll explain what that means in a second. And there needed to be the right conditions. So basically, there needed to be the right conditions for aminos to essentially ferment. Now, without going down that rabbit hole, what that looks like, it's gonna be things like sardines, mackerel, fish in general, tuna, and typically if it's not eaten fresh, right? If foods are eaten fresh, the histamines don't have a chance to form because there's not sort of the fermentation occurring. But fish is very particularly high in histamines. Okay, secondly, fermented foods. Any kind of cheese that's fermented, which is also the best kind of cheese for you and oftentimes the best tasting cheese. Fermented meats, fermented porks, salamis, hams, things like that. Sauerkrauts, kimchi, all these things that are also very good for you. So please do not take this as you need to eliminate these. But what you might wanna look at is, hmm, should I try pulling them out? See if I feel better, if you're bloated, if you're stuffy, if your joints hurt, if you're fatigued, if you're stiff, you might find you pull these foods out or reduce them and you feel better. Tomatoes, eggplant, avocados. Avocados are one of the highest sources of histamines. And it's one of the foods that people pull out because when they pull avocados out, a lot of times their issues resolve. That being said, I eat about an avocado a day. I love avocados. I think it's one of the best foods on the planet. So I am no way saying eliminate these foods unless you find upon eliminating them, you feel better. One very important thing to note though, is that leaving food out or leftovers in general increase these histamine levels because there's more time to ferment, right? The longer something ferments, the higher the histamine levels, the harder it is for your body to clear it, the more they build up, the more they cause the pain, the stiffness, the aches, the annoyance, right? But now let's talk about what are called histamine liberators. These might even be worse than foods high in histamine because these are foods that trigger histamine to release in your body. There was a study that was published in Nutrients and they specifically found that pork was very high in biogenic aminos. This means it has a lot of the available free aminos to ultimately turn into histamines, but can also drive it up in your body. And then when you combine that with like say fermented pork, so like salami or maybe ham, which again, like Parma ham, prosciutto, I go to these. These are Mediterranean staples, I love them. But if you are sensitive to histamines, this could be problematic, so pork is a big one there. Uh, spinach, tomatoes, eggplant, avocados. So we run into the same situation, even papayas and bananas. These are histamine liberators. Now when we look at avocado and tomatoes, these are histamine liberators and also are high in histamine. So a double whammy. So that's why people are so sensitive, particularly to tomatoes and to avocados. Then of course we have peanuts and legumes, not to be confused with like a traditional like anaphylactic type peanut allergy. Okay, some people eat peanuts and have a full on like anaphylaxis issue. Personally, I don't tolerate peanuts well. I do get sneezy, I do get wheezy, but I don't seem to have issues with other foods high in histamine. So who really knows there? And then now we're starting to find that a lot of artificial dyes are actually triggering histamine issues. So they're histamine liberators. Hopefully you've gotten rid of the artificial dyes out of your diet already if you watch this channel, but still something to note. Then we get into the big category, a very important one. Remember how I mentioned deamine oxidase, DAO, is the enzyme that breaks down histamine? Well, there is one particular food that really impacts DAO, okay? It completely can eradicate it, so it makes, so histamine builds even more, and that is alcohol. Well, there was a study published in Alcohol and Alcoholism, and what they demonstrated is that alcohol does a couple of things, does three things. For one, it liberates histamine from the mast cells in the first place. So it triggers the immune cells to poof, release the histamine. This could be the reason why when some people drink alcohol, they get flush and stuffy. I mean, there's reasons why you get flush from a blood flow reason, but people almost get allergic like responses to alcohol. But then the other thing is that alcohol and histamine have similar metabolism. So alcohol and histamine share some of the metabolites. So they have aldehyde dehydrogenase and aldehyde oxidase, and they compete for these things. 
So when alcohol is ingested, it essentially occupies these enzymes or soaks up these enzymes. As a result, histamine levels elevate. So because alcohol is sort of a toxin, it's going to take priority. So the aldehyde dehydrogenase and the aldehyde oxidase end up getting sort of soaked up and used by the alcohol for that breakdown, so the histamine builds even more. So think about it like this. You have histamine building because it's released out of the mast cells when you consume alcohol, and then on top of that, the histamine can never really be broken down because the alcohol is occupying or using those enzymes. So it's a huge issue. So, well, what do you do? You drink alcohol and then you go eat pizza with tomatoes that are high in histamines. You have basically no ability to break them down. Then there's even more literature that suggests that histamine is used in the body to sort of help counteract the gut barrier damage that occurs as a result of drinking alcohol. So even more histamine is produced to protect the gut from the negative effects of alcohol. So with all that being said, what are the solutions? Because you don't wanna just eliminate all these foods. We do need to have a practical solution here. And realistically, here's what it looks like. When it comes down to meat consumption, whenever possible, consume your meat fresh. I know it's hard, but if you can, cook your meat fresh and eat it fresh. Try to limit your leftovers to maybe like a one day leftover if you can. I know it's hard and sometimes it feels like it's very cumbersome, but if you're sensitive to histamines, this might be one of the simple things you need to do. You may not need to go overboard. People get concerned about like strawberries, papayas, bananas, and the histamines and sort of the histamine sort of liberators there. Most of the evidence suggests that fruit is fine if you space it out throughout the day if you have a histamine issue. So maybe don't have a huge bowl of it in one sitting, maybe space it out throughout the day. Tomatoes and avocados would be the two foods you would probably want to eliminate if you really do have a histamine intolerance or a histamine issue in general. Those are the foods that might cause the most grief. So if those are easy to eliminate, they're also easy to test. The Annals of Dermatology had published a paper that had subjects for four weeks go on a low histamine diet, and they found that their allergic reactions in their skin that they were having almost disappeared. So there's something going on when it comes down to histamine and the skin. And the reason I mention that is that Reducing histamine or high histamine foods does have a positive impact if you are dealing with issues. So it's worth a shot because it's not that hard to eliminate them and it might be the easiest lever that you can pull. The other thing that's really interesting is there's a study published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition that found when subjects went on a low histamine diet, that means low histamine foods, or not foods that have high histamine, lowered the levels of foods that were histamine liberators and reduced alcohol for 13 months, this increased the levels of the DAO enzyme in their body significantly. And it seemed to stay that way as long as they didn't go overboard. So the point is, is that even mildly reducing these histamines increase the level of the enzymes in the body. And it seems as though you can do a temporary intervention of reducing histamines and you might even get a longer term result out of it. Now, the last thing that people can do is you can actually supplement with DAO enzyme. However, the clinical literature is not really there yet. There's some stuff, some in vitro stuff, some rodent model stuff, small human stuff, but it's an inexpensive supplement and it might be something that works. A lot of the anecdotal responses, like people's experience, and even if you look at reviews of DAO supplements, it does seem to help people a lot. So that's an inexpensive thing that you might wanna throw into the mix as well. But at the end of the day, one of the biggest, best things that you can do is focus on your gut health. So you gotta do the things that almost seem the opposite if you have gut issues. Like sometimes it's hard to have fiber. Fiber might actually be good for you. It's good to have the collagen. It's good to have the bone broth. It's good to put that emphasis on gut health because remember, 35 to 50% of people with gut issues have histamine intolerances. So if you have gut issues, you probably, well, you have a good chance of having a histamine intolerance. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.